India has committed to reduce green gas emissions by around 1 billion tons and to go for net zero by 2070. Looking to this agenda, as we all know, as an agri-producing country, India is taking significant efforts to promote biofuels. Now food grain waste as well as sugarcane are getting converted to ethanol in a big way. This year alone we will achieve around 10% blending. Day before yesterday, India, uh, within India, UP and Maharashtra have achieved 10.3% uh, uh, blending, uh, which was the target set for the current year. Maharashtra overall is also leading in sugar production, and I am glad that for the first time in last 100 years, Maharashtra sugar production is going to be 120 lakh tons this year. Now this is all time record. We added last year one lakh hectares of sugarcane. Next year we we uh, you know estimate that more or less the area would remain same. However, the tonnage is getting increased in areas like Maratwada, where we are getting around 115 lakh, 115 tons per hectare yield, as against uh, 97 which we had estimated earlier. Because of the good rains, our yield per hectare is increasing. In addition, what we have done is we have given permission for expansion of the mills. We around 40 mills are adding to the daily capacity by 1 lakh tons per day. So that's a huge expansion, adding 40 sugar mills of 2,500 TCD each year. Now this is this is what uh, this is how we are you know uh, will be able to. Uh, cater to the higher sugarcane areas as compared to other crops like uh, grapes, onion, which failed recently because of the climate change effect. People and especially farmers for this part of the uh, state are getting diverted to sugarcane. We are also ensuring around uh, 15, uh, you know, every 15 days payment of FRP. You must all be knowing that recently we shifted to a, a very, uh, within the given legal framework, we have shifted to current year FRP payment as well as current year h &T cost. Now this was not done so far right from the inception of FRP regime. FRP regime came into uh, being in 2009 and in spite of the notification of government of India saying that there is a basic FRP, and there is some premium to be paid after, you know, additional 0.1% uh, additional FRP, which gets realized after end of the season. Now this, practically, we went into details of this. We formed one study group under my chairmanship, and we could work it out to facilitate the, uh, both the sections, farmers as well as sugar mills. Now it will help in actual cash flow for the mills in a very big way. I know in the entire uh, sugar industry scenario in the state, who is ultimately gaining more money? Now, this, I think this particular moment of Maharashtra government to rationalize the FRP payment, rationalize the cash flow payment, and uh, giving FRP payment initially at the rate of 10 or 9.5% as per the government of India notification, will go a very long way in ensuring money and cash flow for the mills. Let us see, next year we will have a better position. Immediately after the, uh, the new uh, regime that was announced by government of Maharashtra by way of government GR, our FRP payment has moved up to 96% yesterday. So almost 4%, only 4% dues are left and this will make the position of the mills very comfortable at the end of the current cr crushing season. Now, because of the Russian, Russian and Ukrainian war, the crude oil prices, as you all know, are going up, and the spurge in higher crude prices class for the demand for ethanol blending of fuel. Maharashtra alone is aiming to create at least 150 crore liters of ethanol this year, as, a, as compared to 88 crore liters last year. New avenues of ethanol production are being explored. World's first ethanol refinery project based on bamboo plant is being set up in Latur district, where daily capacity of 30,000 liters, the 
the basic material used would be bamboo. Now, Maharashtra is also diversifying its industry. Few of our mills have gone for, you know, compressed biogas plants. Uh, Mr. Thomre uh, of Visma is taking a lead in CBG plant. Slowly, you know, recently has been sanctioned the CBG pet pump itself, dispensing pump itself at the site. So this is a new beginning probably uh, in the state. While we are talking about hydrogen, uh, you know, hydrogen uh, power system, as well as aviation fuel being created in the uh, sugar mills, we are diversifying to the maximum extent. Few of the mills are going for pharma products, some are going for liquor, some are going for CBG, some are going for um, you know, potash uh, manufacturing, which is a need of the country because the entire potassium is getting imported as fertilizer. So practically, whatever products were there from the fossil fuel, almost all the range of products can be prepared and manufacturing, uh, manufactured in the sugar industry. Therefore, in the, in the next five years, we want every sugar mill to be, you know, the hub of the biofuel, uh, uh, industry and it will no more be recognized as a sugar industry, it will be recognized as a comprehensive uh, bio uh, refinery. Now that, that is a goal set for Maharashtra. Uh, Maharashtra produces around 30% of the sugar of All India sugar production and with the EBP program we, we are aiming at you know diversification of 12 to 13 lakh tons this year, 15 lakh tons next year, and within three years, we might probably divert around 20 uh, LMT of uh, sugar towards ethanol. This will ensure, you know, my, uh, my major worry is payment of the farmers, which last year was around 34,000 crore as FRP, out of which 14,000 crores will come from the uh, ethanol program. So next, next to next year, probably 50% of the cost of FRP will come from the ethanol. And that would be a very strange situation where, you know, the mill owners need not worry about the cash flow or neither they will have to worry about the timely payment of the farmers. We are easing out the norms. We are liberalizing the norms. We are also ensuring how, the, how rationally we can calculate FRP for the farmers. Now, this particular easing out of the burden of mandatory FRP payment on sugar mills have rationalized the FRP payments and it has also ensured a legal framework for the next 10-15 years for the industry. Now what I envisage as, you know, as a sugar commissioner, I want more, you know, more uh, mind application on the part of the mill management for timely payment of the cane dues. Number two, more diversification in the sugar industry, more management of their land and other resources. How can we, you know, reduce the burden of uh, uh, employees or the wage bill uh, from the mill? That that uh, has to be the agenda for the mills. Another agenda is this year because of the bumper crop, we faced lot of problems from farmers about timely harvesting of the crops. You know, our sugar season is getting. Uh, squeezed to around 112 days as against 160 days. Now that's a very strange situation where we have 12.5 lakh uh, hectares of sugarcane uh, area and people want everyone's sugarcane to be crushed within say period of 90 days or so. And therefore mills need to be more equipped, they need to be more mechanized, they need to buy more uh, mechanized harvesters and probably as a roadmap, I see like the milk industry or dairy industry, can we shift to individual uh, recovery based uh, uh, program of harvesting so that you know we can benchmark. There is one stall of Mahindra's I, uh, I just visited. They are into use of artificial intelligence uh, indicating you know maturity of the crops through satellite imageries. Uh, if we can, some of the mills of Maharashtra are working in close liaison with Mahindras for this. Now they are saying we can predict practically to 99% the 
the maturity of the sugar cane crop through satellite imageries. Now, this this kind of technology can be used by some of the mills so that you know practically we convert this on ground to teach every farmer that your crop is not mature or it will take maturity after say three weeks, four weeks, and then go for harvesting. Now, it would it would ultimately ensure you know more recovery for the mill, less losses for the mills, as well as it will also ensure more money to the farmers because the entire FRP formula is based on recovery percentage. We are practically doing RSF calculations as per Angrajan Committee report. I think no other state is doing right now RSF calculations to the accuracy that we, uh, that we are doing in the state. Now this year because of the higher cane, uh, sugar uh, prices, I hope more than 100 mills will have to pay RSF. That is revenue sharing formula. And what is this revenue sharing formula? They are saying if your FRP is a basic minimum payment, if you are earning more money than that, 70% has to go to farmers and 30% has to go to the mill. Practically no state in the country is doing RSF calculation and that is why few of the states have still kept SAP, state advisory price, which is slightly higher than FRP, but they escape interest being paid to the farmers, they escape RSF sharing with the farmers. So there are, there are advantages and disadvantages of the system. But still, Government of India has advised all the states, especially UP, to go for FRP regime rather than SAP. We are, right now, VSI and MITCON, these are the two agencies we are helping us in setting up the you know, project reports for the ethanol projects. But right now, around 100, uh, both cooperative and sugar mills are going for ethanol, uh, setting up of ethanol plants. Slowly, the capacity will go up. Next year, we hope to reach around 200 crore liters of ethanol production in the state alone. So that would be around, say, 13 to 14,000 crores of uh, turnover as compared to, say, 40,000 crores of FRP. Next to next year will be again, when we reach 20% blending, probably the share of, uh, share of ethanol will be slightly higher. It will go up to 45 to 50% uh, to the total uh, you know, cost of FRP. And this will be a win-win kind of situation wherein you know, probably we will be in a position uh, like on the lines of Brazil to select a particular choice depending on the rates available internationally, whether of sugar or ethanol or probably the byproducts. Now, there are, you know, distinguished uh, uh, strategists at this particular conference over the two years, uh, two days of conference, we'll debate on many issues that sugar industry is facing right now. But the greatest challenge for me seems to be the financial, uh, you know, management of the mills. Because as a sugar commissioner, I see 30 to 40 percent of the mills are facing financial crisis. Most of them are uh, having net negative net worth, or they are into NPA. Even uh, for the personal loans, when the rates have come down to 6% of the interest amount, uh, interest rates, the pledge loan is being given at the rate of 11.5 or in some cases 10.5 depending on their performance by the, uh, by the banks. In the, in the short run, I, I, I would uh, you know, impress upon all the banks to reconsider because Nationalized, uh, nationalized banks are giving at the late level of, say, 11%. Now, if they can reduce the rate of interest, uh, the interest burden would substantially reduce for the mills, and it will ensure at least saving of 20 crores for a typical 5,000 TCD mill. Now, if they save 20, 20 crores, now 12 to 13 crores can go to farmers, and 7 crores of money can be saved by the mill itself. It's, it will be a, ideally a win-win situation for the both, both as farmers as well as the mills. And therefore, 
we are stressing very hard on financial management by the mills. We, this year we started around 10 sugar mills which were closed 10 years ago, but however we could lease out because of this new potential of ethanol blending, we could revive 10 cooperative mills. And I, I, I have the honor to lead this, uh, uh, you know, revolutionary, uh, revolutionize this program of, uh, or revival of the cooperative mills in a big way. Ultimately, I feel ideally the sugar mills, you know, while they, they are thinking of a roadmap for themselves, ideally what, what should happen is, though there is no zoning limit for the sugar uh, cane harvesting, we need to regulate right from, you know, registration by the farmers. Uh, everything has to be regulated online. Now, right now we are not giving any disincentive to a farmer who is not registering his sugar cane. Neither there is any penalty for, you know, uh, for uh, uh, registering the wrong area or less area or more area. We need to regulate, you know, the registration of farmers, the areas, the varieties, people are, you know, still misguiding the mills about the particular varieties. And when actually maturity period is coming, there is a dispute between farmer and mill. And we are, we are facing the heat of it right now when the crop is very high uh, uh, in size and number. Now the current, uh, Challenges before sugar industry, low yield of sugar cane in Maharashtra, in some parts of Maharashtra. Can we have a system where, you know, few of the mills which are nearer to Mumbai for export can specialize in particular commodities and mills away from, you know, port like Varatwada can specialize in some other sector. Like we have avenues from pharma sector to liquor to ethanol to potash to uh, oxygen to say, say, sanitizers, you can almost manufacture all the products that natural fossil fuels used to give earlier. Now, within the state, one of the strange things that I have noticed as sugar commissioner is no mill is sharing actual important information with other mills. Can there be a forum where they openly, uh, you know, strategize themselves and create a specialization for themselves? For example, if some meal has an advantage over quality of sugar, can they go for quality of sugar? Can the other meal go for liquor? The third meal for exports, fourth meal for, uh, you know, very high capacity ethanol uh, distillery plant? Because ultimately, after five years, what I see is they will compete among themselves. And those 40 mills that we put in the red zone, they are going to finish or vanish from the scene. That seems to be very obvious for me because as such, I know the highest mill that I see in the state is facing a debt of around 700 crores. With a plant manufacturing, you know, cost of 120, uh, uh, 20 crores, and if they are facing a loan of say 700 crores, there seems no opportunity for them to revive. Now, if some other cooperative or a private mill is ready to take over such plants, or go for distillery, or even there are some you know uneconomical plants like 12, 1200 TCD plants or very smaller plants, there we can go for distillery manufacturing with higher capacity and still keep the original license of 1200 TCD. So this kind of you know specialization within the state would go a very long way in facing the issue as well as issue as well as you know sustainability of the sugar industry in the long run. I hope this particular sugar conference will focus and discuss on such issues and uh, risk response strategies in sugar trade and the way forward to building a more innovative and sustainable sugar and ethanol sector in India. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so very much for this highly informative address, sir. And now to felicitate our speaker, I would like to invite uh, MD Regreen Excel, Mr. Sanjay Desai, to felicitate our speaker, Mr. Shekhar Gaikwad. 
I request you all to please give a round of applause, a louder one. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shekhar Zawang, once again, and thank you for felicitating.